Hi, and welcome to another quick demonstration and run through of the ArcSight ESM solution. In this particular case, I'm going to be digging a little bit more into the analytics solutions just to indicate uh, and talk about some scenarios around how we can better use analytics to support our security decisions. So first off, I'll start with, uh, in this particular case, uh, some notifications. So we've got two here, and the way I regard this is a two-way process with regards to analytics specifically. Uh, we need to be able to send data to our analytics solution and equally we need to receive data from. I'm going to deal with the first scenario which is to send data to analytics. Uh, why would we want to do that? Surely analytics can figure all that out for us. Well there is a good reason for doing so and, and a lot of this comes down to the context of the data that we're receiving. So for example I'll take this particular uh, event first here which is attack progressing across firewall. It's uh, been already escalated as a high priority and if I actually look at the event here I can see there's corresponding base events here. Well, if my analytics is getting all this data, surely it's it's figuring all this out. What's the, the additional context here? Well, the context they're adding is with reference to its cross to firewall, with reference to understanding what's inside and what's outside, what's part of my network, in this particular case, case here, and what's external to my network, as in the attacker here, and what the relevance is, uh, and, and attaching additional information to understand what that relevance is as part of the context categorization as we send it for further uh, analysis through the analytics engine. That's where the real power comes when we start adding that additional data into this to understand what other visibility the, the, uh, the statistical baselining and the advanced analytics can actually provide us with this additional data. You're not necessarily going to get that additional context information to know that it's crossed a firewall and so on. OK, let's take another quick example just to uh, il illustrate this a little bit further. So in this case, we've seen attack progressing known vulnerable asset. Well, let's take a look at this particular event. In this particular case, we can see that it's, a, okay, it's an old uh, vulnerability uh, that's been detected by an IDS system. The relevance here is that we've actually attached and understood that this asset that's been touched uh, is actually vulnerable. We can see the, the vulnerability here. We can actually jump very quickly through to that. So it's literally just uh, double clicking me, uh, double clicking and, and drinking through into that particular asset. There we can see the asset. Then we can see the vulnerable asset there. We can just double click on that. We can even dig down into the assets that are attached to that asset as well. But that's irrelevant. I, I'm not going to worry about that too much here. The important thing here is I'm actually attaching that information to understand the relevance of what that vulnerability is, that we've seen some corresponding data come from, uh, uh, the in this particular case, I can see here from my IDS system, and we've scored the priority accordingly. So as you can see, by attaching and processing that, that vulnerability information, I I could now forward that data from an analytics point of view to be further processed to understand that this is high priority, high relevance and high severity for further understanding from the analytics point of view is what other assets, what other vulnerabilities, what other impact has, has been triggered as part of that. So that's sending data into our analytics solution to add further capability around the context to understand what it means. What about the other way around? Well, OK, let's let's take some data. Uh, so we can just scroll down here a second and we can see lots of data here. We can we can understand this information. What we're seeing is a lack of user information specifically. So, OK, that's that's fair enough. You know, maybe we've not seen any logins or logouts. The great way with in a case of the uh, Hewlett Packard Enterprise uh, security analytics solutions, actually it's called user behavior analytics, is that it focuses around the user and the identity information. That's when suddenly we can start to add a lot more visibility to what's going on. So here we can see there's a lot more uh, user data, there's information on what's going on. Um, if we just looked at a particular set of this data, actually, I'll look at this particular one here, we can see that it's a, a log on event here. We can see this authentication verify this is success. Uh, we know this has come from a Windows device and we can see all the user information and the data we'd normally get from Windows. But the great thing in the case of the uh, UBA or user behavior analytics solution is we can start to understand what's going on with relevance to what that user is trying to do, what their access rights are, how they're doing additional uh, access and, and logins and escalation, which of course is that's the key vector for this kind of information uh, and how an attacker will use it against us is they will escalate their privileges to do things that they shouldn't be doing.
But of course, that's where UBA starts to come in. So, OK, let's just look at the UBA events for a second here. and Let's just understand what we're seeing. So this is the event data that's been forwarded from our analytics platform to tell us what's going on. The great thing here is we've actually understand, uh, for example, here, clean up uh, of suspicious access privileges. We can see this particular user is doing that. We can see that this particular user is doing something around peer based uh, analysis and detection of privileged activity. We can even see monitoring indicators to indicate that there's been a possible escalation here as well. The great thing, of course, is actually I can dig into any one of these. Just double click, look at the event, dig down. And more importantly, because we've linked this with an identity system, we can actually get who the individual person is behind this as well. Now we're adding the context back in to our real time processing platform. Why would we want to do that? Well, just think of it this way. Of course, what we could do is we could even have that information because we know the username that's being used here. Uh, if we ever see that username, we could automatically increase the priority of events uh, touched with that particular host or in that particular uh, workstation that's been used as well. We can do that very simply and very easily just by adding the information to what we call the compromised user list. We can see here there's the data. It's actually added this through a rule. Uh, it's very simple. We've done this programmatically. It's a state thing. We're tracking that state. We're understanding that these are the usernames that are suspicious. We've put the IP addresses on here. We've even put the zones and so on. So, so suddenly we're starting to add some, some uh, very, very useful context data back into the real time system. Well, surely the analytics platform can do that as well. Yes, to a degree, there is some validity in doing some, some of that as well. But surely the great advantage here is if I wouldn't be looking at a list of events as such, I'd be looking at a list of prioritized based uh, correlations that have occurred. And now I can start to understand, well, I'm seeing users added to lists. I'm seeing particular IP addresses being used on other activities. I'm seeing them tripping up against reputation and threat intelligence data as well. Suddenly I can do this in real time rather than having to wait for an analytics job to finish. If I get an indication that a user, for example, one of these particular users we now consider to be a compromised user is now trying to access our VPN and we can actually identify that in real time in milliseconds now we can then trigger an action for example disable that user account kick them off the vpn system or even uh, take out some action around a, a network access control uh, or, or similar kind of system to prevent their further access around the environment we can now do that in real time rather than having to wait for our analytics solution to run the next job run or the next set of inst uh, instructions for it to actually do the analytics process that's the advantage that we want to be sending data to analytics around the context of what the data means, for example, vulnerabilities uh, and piecing together the context of the infrastructure. Equally, we want to be receiving data from our analytics solution. In this case, it's based around the user and the identity. So then we can take real time effects and stop and block users from what they're doing as well. That's all I wanted to cover. It's a very, very quick run through of some of the scenarios you'd want to be looking to do that. Uh, and thank you very much for your time.